When I examined Horizon Forbidden West earlier this year, I walked away impressed by the presentation and feel that it stands as one of the more visually striking games released thus far this generation. But it's not without flaw. Aside from a smattering of bugs in that original release, most of which have been corrected, users were disappointed by aspects of the image quality, namely the performance mode delivered soft yet shimmery results that rendered this mode somewhat unusable for many people, while the resolution mode also exhibited a different kind of shimmering, specifically within foliage. With this latest update, however, Gorilla reckons they've solved the issue entirely. The performance mode boasts vastly improved image quality, and users have already chimed in suggesting that it is indeed the case. So we wondered, what has actually changed compared to the original mode, and what is the current state of Horizon Forbidden West? That's what I wanted to find out. So in addition to testing the game, I also reached out to Gorilla to see what's going on. But before we dive into the latest version, I want to briefly mention the prior updates that attempted to improve this situation. In this case, it's version 1.007, which includes a line in the patch notes that says, made multiple tweaks to vegetation to improve image quality in the favored performance mode. But what does this really mean? Well, in this case, Gorilla seemingly tweaked the LOD bias of the mipmaps to reduce distance sharpness in order to eliminate shimmering. But unfortunately, this has minimal impact on final image quality, and this is the reason why most folks were unhappy with the result, which is where the latest patch comes into play. Did they really solve the issue? Well, to test this, I reinstalled the game from disk while disconnected from the internet in order to capture the game in its original, unpatched format. Once I completed the necessary capture in this mode then, I would patch the game and then duplicate my tests there. It's worth noting that save games from the updated version of the game are incompatible with the original release, thus I had to start the game from the beginning for this test. So with that in mind, let's get right into it with some comparisons. Before even diving into the discussion around image quality though, I wanted to share this, the introduction sequence. This real-time introduction is rather impressive to behold, but in its original incarnation, it exhibited noticeable hiccups on camera cuts and visible pop-in, and I expected to see those differences improved in the patched version. But what I didn't expect was this. Essentially, Guerrilla Games has made numerous changes to the introduction sequence in pursuit of optimized presentation. Camera work has been fully readjusted in certain scenes, lighting position and intensity was modified, and there are various other tweaks throughout these sequences. They've reworked the entire introduction. Even things like this dream sequence feature vastly different fields of view and color selections throughout. It feels a lot more polished now. Or how about this focus generated iconography, which now emits light in the patched version in a way that it did not originally. And note that even as of version 1.007, this light was not present in the intro. What's wild about all this is that it's not just limited to the game's introduction. Scenes such as the game's title sequence, which follows the prologue mission, has been completely altered. This one is especially curious though, as this sequence was pre-rendered on the last generation PlayStation 4, it's just a video, meaning it would be more difficult to update though I don't have a PS4 disc for testing, but I wonder if that has changed as well. But enough of that, let's talk about the image quality. That's what we're here for, right? Right away, this patch of moss serves as a perfect demonstration. In the default performance mode, the shimmer is distracting and highly visible to most users. This is very specifically the issue at hand. Now, in comparison with the patch installed, the issue has been completely resolved. The image is now stable and clean in motion with virtually all shimmering vanquished. So how about another scene? As you can see, once again, the situation is much the same. The crawling noise present in that original version has been eliminated. It's much cleaner in motion. Now if we move to another scene, observe the red mist in the distance. The way in which it's depicted has shifted indeed. The individual particles are no longer visible in that noisy fashion. And if we move a little bit closer to it, it still looks much the same. Yet if we jump to another scene, you can see that in close proximity to the player, the red mist effect remains, suggesting that it's a side effect of the changes perhaps. Which then begs the question. The difference is clear, but what has actually changed? 
To find out, I spoke with senior principal tech programmer Guillaume de Carpentier over at Guerrilla Games to gain a better understanding. And based on his explanation, this is what I've gathered from it. Fundamentally, in its original form, the game utilizes a checkerboard rendering solution to reach 3200 by 1800 effective pixels, using 50% fewer pixels overall. We've discussed this many times before, but it has some drawbacks. The anti-aliasing pass relies on input frame data to build the final image, and in this original version, only the current and previous raw rendered frames prior to reconstruction are used as this input to assemble the final frame. The update, however, modifies this. It now combines the current raw rendered frame with the previous complete anti-aliased frame. So they're still doing the two frame stabilization, but it can now utilize history from prior frames for longer, which is what helps reduce the shimmering while retaining more sub-pixel detail. And it's not a new technique, as Gilliam stressed, but it does run the risk of introducing ghost frames. The more data from prior frames it is used, the greater chance of this artifact rearing its head. But with this old two-frame raw approach, it also meant a lot more visible shimmering. It's basically a trade-off. So the benefit here is that the game could run the post-processing effects prior to the anti-aliasing pass, since they were working exclusively from the raw frames prior to reconstruction. And that has not changed with this patch. And because of that, the team needed to work to improve their anti-aliasing resolve to avoid the unwanted artifacts such as ghosting. So to do this then, they improved the processing of motion vectors, developed ways to better reject out-of-date history, while reprojecting actual sub-pixel thin geometry more confidently and accurately over longer periods of time. They also added a sharper custom reprojection kernel and output sharpening that changes according to the dynamic resolution. Which is why if you look very closely, you will see some extra slight edge ringing on certain edges. Though the effect is largely positive, I'd say. And on top of that, they're still using their checkerboard compatible version of FXAA. So basically, detail is resolved more sharply and ghosting is generally minimized. Though in certain worst case scenarios like this, you can still see a little bit of additional ghosting in the new patch versus the original version. And I believe some of this ties into that aforementioned red mist, which seems to have been modified to suit the new techniques. Beyond this though, the team has apparently spent a lot of time further optimizing the game post release, giving them more headroom for improved image resolve while also keeping the dynamic resolution system from dropping as often as before. So that's essentially what's changed with this update and why it required a lot of additional development time. By reconstructing the image with additional frames of data over a longer period of time, there's just more information to work with when it comes to producing the final output. But solving for issues and artifacts took some time. I think it's pretty clear by now from the comparison shots that this approach has largely been a success and image quality is transformed when utilizing the game's performance mode. The instability and in shimmering has been completely eliminated, I'd say. But what about the game's resolution mode, which targets native 4K? These changes do still apply after all, so how does it fare? Well, personally, this one is a little bit tricky, because I kind of have a preference for that original ultra pin sharp presentation. But at the same time, there's no denying that the new solution solves many of the shimmering issues people reported initially. So for most folks, I do think the update is an across the board improvement. In general, I was impressed with the stability of the performance and elimination of rendering issues that had existed in prior versions of the game. It's really, really nice looking now. And they're not even finished, as according to another blog on the game, they will be adding VRR support in the future, as well as a 40Hz mode, which is something we've been requesting for a long time now. But this exercise also highlighted some other changes that were interesting for me to see. Specifically, I was intrigued by how different certain areas can look with the patch installed. Take this view, for instance. The original unpatched game fails to draw many distant structures. These will pop in when you get closer, but from a distance, it looks a little bit strange, especially when you can see smoke billowing from a chimney that doesn't exist. With the patch installed, as you can see, the vista is restored. The chimney is now present, including the full building around it. 
There's a whole group of tents and other structures over here to the left, and everything is just much more filled in and more consistently integrated. They've also eliminated issues like this. In the original version, when sneaking up on this machine, note how most of his body is simply absent, right up until the point that it pops into view. This happened a lot in early versions of the game, but thankfully, and I think this has been fixed for a while, it does not occur in the patched version of the game. I was never able to replicate anything quite like this. So basically, the point here is that Horizon Forbidden West is in a very good spot at the moment. Given the state of the launch code, this is one of those rare cases though, where I do hope a version of the game is re-released on disc at a later date with all updates and perhaps some additional DLC content directly integrated into it. I do feel that Gorilla deserves some serious credit here for addressing user complaints such as this. The original performance mode was technically usable, of course, but it was clear that most players were genuinely unhappy with the resulting image quality. They could have left it alone, but took the extra time to instead work out a new solution that dramatically improves things. Comparatively, we've seen no such improvements in games such as Elden Ring, which, while amazing as a game, fails in terms of its technical execution with unstable performance and incorrect frame pacing on certain machines. So when we do see massive improvements like this, I think it's worth taking note. Yes, it's a shame that it launched with issues in the first place, but it has been corrected and hopefully this directly influences their next game in terms of image quality targets. I think this also serves as an excellent demonstration of how image treatment matters more than the raw pixel count. The game targets the same 3200 by 1800 both in its original form and its current iteration, using checkerboard rendering of course. Yet the changes have such a dramatic impact on overall quality while still dealing with the same number of raw pixels. It's not just about pixel count any longer. So my takeaway then, in the original video I recommended users stick to the resolution mode due to the impressive level of clarity but also as a result of the subpar image quality when using performance mode. Now the current build does lose some of that sharpness in resolution mode but sees huge gains in terms of performance mode quality and temporal stability in both modes. As a result, I have to shift my recommendation over to the performance mode. This is now the best way to play the game. Of course, we'll see how things change when the 40Hz mode arrives. But that's going to do it for this little video. Hopefully you found it useful, and if you did, be sure to let us know. Like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.